This is Kurt from Classic Automotive Training School. In our last video we covered the effects of polarity in the inductive trigger system used in Porsche 911 and 930 models. Today we're going to look at how this affects the CDI and what actually happens to ignition timing on the vehicle with a reversed polarity. So we have our 6 pin CDI connected to our wiring harness, our ignition distributor, and we're hooked up on the scope to show both trigger circuit and the capacitor discharge circuit. What this is going to show is the point where the capacitors discharge in relationship to the trigger circuit. Okay, so we're going to run the distributor up to engine idle speed 950, 1000 RPM and record what's going on. Okay, so what we can see from this, I've zeroed our scale on the distributor machine, showing where the ignition distributor is firing. And if we bring our arrow up, we'll see if we look in closely at the distributor that our reluctor and stator arms are very close together. On our scope, the yellow line is the capacitor discharge and the pink line is our trigger signal. If we zoom in, what we see happening is the trigger event is happening just slightly above the ground threshold on the fast flowing downslope of the trigger impulse. This upward slope is also very important. The CDI is looking for this positive going waveform to know to arm itself to get ready to fire. So when it sees the negative going slope, it knows to discharge. Okay, now we want to look at the effects of the trigger base to RPM. So I'm going to fire the machine up. We're going to run it up to around 4,000 engine RPM. And we're going to look at the scope and see what happens to the trigger waveform, as well as we'll see our distributor advance should be moving on our scale here. So we had about 8 degrees of mechanical advance. This is a counterclockwise rotating ignition distributor, so you can see it moved uh, to the left of the zero point. If it was a clockwise rotational distributor, it would be moving to the right. We can also see a frozen air scope shot of what's happened to our trigger signal. We can see our trigger signal has gotten extremely tall, and that's because the faster the ignition distributor turns, the more voltage it generates. Also, the faster the event happens, and we'll talk about how this event actually happens in just a minute. The firing spikes that you're seeing on the yellow line, this is the CDI recharging itself. So this weird looking line as it comes back up to 450 volts is the CDI box keeping up with the RPM. We can still see our firing event is happening at the negative going slope, approximately at the zero crossing threshold, but we can see how much this line has straightened out, and this creates an offset in our timing. I want to talk about actually how the waveform for the trigger is generated. In our last video, we spoke about polarity and how the windings affect the polarity and how the design of the winding is what designates the polarity of the waveform. But in the actual vehicle, 
when the ignition distributor is rotating. This is what is telling the system to generate a waveform. As the stator is rotating, the closer it gets to these posts, the more positive going energy it's generating. As the stator crosses the reluctor posts, about a degree or two after it's crossed, is what will cause the voltage to drop very, very quickly, creating our trigger edge. Now, on a counterclockwise rotating distributor, the firing point will be just kind of to the right of the post if you're looking at it. On a clockwise rotating distributor, it's going to be just slightly to the left of the post. Okay, so now we've looked at how the distributor is working when wired correctly. Now we want to see what the effect is if we reverse the polarity. I've created a small jump wire and the only purpose of this is to reverse the distributor polarity. And I'm just going to install this in our harness, which is going to allow us to flip the signal to the CDI box. Okay, let's run it up and see what it looks like. Okay, the first thing that we notice is on our ignition timing, now our pointer is flashing 30 degrees offset from where it was. We haven't changed anything in the ignition distributor. All we've done is flip the polarity of the impulse trigger. If we look at our scope, we can now see that instead of firing on a fast moving down angled slope, we're firing on this long tail of the downward facing slope. We can also see too that the angle of our fast moving slope that originally was moving from positive to negative on a slant towards the negative slope is now slanted in the upwards way heading towards positive. Okay, so let's look at the effects when we increase our RPM. Okay, so what we see, if we look at the timing, you'll notice that there's a lot of movement in the timing, both in the forward and reverse sides of advance. So it is advancing and retarding itself at the same time. And this is related heavily to speed. If we were looking at the oscilloscope at the same time, this changing in advance can be seen because of the length of the tail of our waveform, and this is the tail from the positive going slope to the negative going slope, is changing substantially. And this is the characteristic of this waveform, where if the polarity is reversed, this slow going transition down to negative voltage will move substantially. So instead of getting eight degrees advance out of the distributor, we only ended up seeing around four degrees and it was erratic at that. So if you don't have an oscilloscope in your shop or at your home, a quick way to see if your car is wired correctly is to look in the ignition distributor itself. So what you need to do is start the engine, let it idle, make sure the ignition timing is at or around zero degrees. Switch the engine off and manually rotate the engine around to TDC number one, and then take the ignition distributor cap off. If the trigger circuit is wired correctly, what you will see is this. You will see the stator and the reluctor will be very close to lined up. It'll be slightly off center uh, of the, the post, but it'll be very close. If the trigger system is wired backwards or inverted or flipped, 
what you will see is the stator and the reluctor will be located like this. What this does, or what this means, is that the distributor is firing on the downward going tail of the waveform instead of the fast moving trigger slope. This is bad for a lot of reasons because the other issue that you have is distributor count. When you're firing with the rotor and the rotor is located in between posts, what happens when it fires is the spark energy has to jump to the closest post and it may actually jump to both posts depending which is easiest path to ground. Well that's all we have for you today. Hopefully it helps you understand the effects of the trigger circuit in relationship to timing and ignition distributor rotation and polarity. We'd like to say thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button or if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment.